find the curvature and radius of curvature of the vector function at t equals five pi over six. The graph of r of t is shown below in blue. The graph is an ellipse in the xy plane. Let's review curvature and radius of curvature. The curvature at a point measures how sharply the curve bends or how quickly it changes direction. The curvature of a line is zero. The curvature of a circle is equal to the reciprocal of the radius. More formally, the curvature measures how quickly the direction of the unit tangent vector changes with respect to a change in arc length s. When we have a space curve in three dimensions, we normally use this formula here to determine the curvature. In our case, because we have a plane curve, we'll be using a simplified formula, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Let's first look at an animation. Here we have a function graphed in black. In blue, we will see the circle of curvature as we animate a point along the curve. If we stop here for a moment, remember the radius of the circle of curvature and the curvature of the function are reciprocals of one another. So right here, the circle is fairly large, which means the radius is fairly large, resulting in a small curvature. But as we approach this bend in the curve, the circle of curvature gets smaller and the curvature of the function gets larger. So right here, the radius of the circle of curvature is small, resulting in a much larger curvature. Let's animate this point in the circle of curvature along the curve. Again, the curvature is equal to the reciprocal of the radius of the blue circle, which is the circle of curvature. Going back to our example, because we have a two-dimensional vector function, the z component is equal to zero. So if we apply this formula for the curvature with the z component of zero, the curvature formula simplifies to the formula we see here. So for this example, we'll be using the simplified formula for the curvature, which again only applies when we have a plane curve, not when we have a space curve. So for the given vector function, x of t is equal to seven cosine t, and y of t is equal to three sine t. Now we need to find the first and second derivatives of x of t and y of t. So x prime of t is equal to negative seven sine t. X double prime of t is equal to negative seven cosine t. And y prime of t is equal to three cosine t and y double prime of t is equal to negative three sine t. And now we can determine the curvature as a function of t. The curvature k is equal to, in the numerator we have the absolute value of x prime of t times y double prime of t, which is negative seven sine t times negative three sine t minus x double prime of t times y prime of t, which is negative seven cosine t times three cosine t. So we have the absolute value of the difference of these two products. In the denominator we have the quantity x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared raised to three halves power, which gives us the square of negative seven sine t plus the square of three cosine t, and all this is raised to the three halves power. And now let's begin simplifying. In the numerator we have 21 sine squared t minus negative 21 cosine squared t, which is equivalent to plus 21 cosine squared t. We have the absolute value of this sum. In the denominator, we have the quantity 49 sine squared t plus nine cosine squared t. And this is all raised to three halves power. Let's continue on the next slide. Looking at the numerator, we have a common factor of 21. We factor out the 21, we have 21 times the quantity sine squared t plus cosine squared t, 
we should recognize that sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to one, and therefore the numerator simplifies to the absolute value of 21, which is 21. And the denominator remains the same. We have 49 sine squared t plus nine times cosine squared t raised to the three halves power. And now that we have the curvature as a function of t, we need to determine the value at t equals five pi over six. So the curvature at t equals five pi over six is equal to 21 divided by the quantity 49 times sine squared five pi over six plus nine times cosine squared five pi over six. And all this is raised to the three halves power. And now we need to find sine five pi over six and cosine five pi over six, which we can find on the unit circle. We're using reference triangles. Five pi over six would be this angle here in standard position. Well, the reference angle is pi over six radians or 30 degrees, and therefore we can label the opposite side one, the hypotenuse two and the long leg square root three. But because we're in the second quadrant, where x is negative, this would be negative square root three. So using the reference angle theta, we can determine sine five pi over six and cosine five pi over six. Sine is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is one half. Cosine is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is negative square root three over two. Which means the curvature at five pi over six is equal to 21 divided by the quantity 49 times one half squared plus nine times the square of negative square root three divided by two and all this is raised to three halves power. Simplifying, we have 21 divided by the quantity, one half squared is one fourth, so we have 49 fourths plus the square of negative square root three over two is three fourths, nine times three fourths is 27 fourths. All this is raised to three halves power and 49 fourths plus 27 fourths is equal to 76 fourths, which is equal to 19. So the denominator simplifies to 19 raised to the three halves power. So the curvature at five pi over six is equal to 21 divided by 19 raised to the three halves power, which is approximately equal to 0 0.25356. Now if we go back to our question, we're also asked to determine the radius of curvature. And remember, the curvature is equal to the reciprocal of the radius of the circle of curvature, which means the radius is equal to one over the curvature. So the radius of curvature, which I'll call r at five pi over six, is equal to one over the curvature, or the reciprocal of the curvature, which is 19 to the three halves, divided by 21, which is approximately 3.94377. Now if we go back to the first graph for a moment, the circle of curvature for the ellipse at t equals five pi over six is shown here. And the radius of this circle, which again is a circle of curvature, is approximately 3.94. And the curvature of the ellipse at t equals five pi over six is approximately 0 0.25. I hope you found this helpful.